Well, the fate of Labor's $10 billion future housing fund remains in jeopardy as the Greens continue to hold out for more changes to win its support in the Senate. But a group of independent MPs are now proposing a new way of tackling the housing affordability crisis. The member for Wentworth, Allegra Spinner, joins us from Canberra now. Allegra, good to see you. Thanks for your time. So you want a citizens' assembly. What is that and how will it fix things? OK, so a citizens' assembly is pretty similar to a jury. Um, so jury, we trust Australians to come together and make, you know, deliberate about serious issues um, and then, you know, make a, make a su judgment. In a citizens' assembly is a similar approach but on a policy issue. You know, we consult experts about policy questions, you know, we do surveys. Um, but we don't give the opportunity of, of Australians, like a broad group of Australians, to come together to listen to the experts, to listen to the evidence and come up with their recommendations about what they think will, will make a difference. And I think this is a great opportunity to do politics differently and apply this to housing affordability because housing affordability is one of the biggest issues um, that we face as a country. It's been decades in the making, this current housing crisis, and we're going to it's going to take a lot for us to get out there, uh, get out of it. And I feel that, you know, getting Australians in the room and talking about this is a great way to actually come up with different solutions and better solutions um, to inform the pol political debate. OK, um, I read a New South Wales productivity report yesterday because much of this is down to the states, the sorts of exciting things I do while the kids are asleep during the day, Allegra. Um, I love it, those reports too, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> but it came up with three key points, uh, and just bear with me here. New South Wales needs to raise average apartment heights in suburbs close to the CBD, point one. Point two, allow more development near transport hubs, point two. Point three, encourage townhouses and more dual occupancy uses, that's such as granny flats. Would you be pushing states to speed up those kinds of proposals? Look, I'm suggesting that we get together with the um, that we get the Australian people and to get actually citizens to buy into that. Um, but to be honest, you know, I think those are some very sensible recommendations. You know, you look at my community; we already have 60% of my community that live in apartments versus yeah. the Af the national average, which is about 22%. We only have 17% of my community that live in standalone houses. Um, again, versus a national average that is is many times that. So I think that's I think what they're suggesting from the product. Activity Commission is really um, sensible, but we actually need the whole of the country to get behind this. And I think actually getting citizens, people who are owners, renters, mortgage holders, together talking about the challenges that we face and, we're, and making their recommendations yeah. about how to move forward, I think is a great way to do it and be informed by things like the Productivity Commission. The, the, prob the problem is, though, Allegra, I mean, there's talk, 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 and there's reports and recommendations, all that kind of stuff, but nothing ever gets done. Well, not enough is getting done. And look, I, you know, for me, this is, you know, this doesn't stop the government pursuing its policies. It doesn't stop New South Wales government. But it, what it does is actually brings the Australian community together in you know, 100 people from around the country, from rural communities, from regional communities, from urban communities, young and old, you know, people from yeah. different backgrounds coming together and trying to find that consensus. Because to be honest, this is not going to be solved in a flash or in a news announcement. This is a systemic issue that we have had. It's been decades in the making. And it will probably take us, you know, decades to sure. properly well, get out of this. But I want us to get I uh, get onto it. OK, uh, another idea, and it's just, it's just mine. I'm a big fan of high-speed rail. I wish we had it here in Australia. And as urban sprawl continues, do you think this energises the case for high-speed rail here? And I know that Anthony Albanese, he's, sort of, he's a fan of it and moving towards getting reports done. But would you like to see it? Look, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of things that make it easier for people to live and commute you know, in a way that makes, you know, their lives better so they can spend more time at home but can get to work when they need to as well. Um, I think, you know, every single one, I'll, I'll be honest, I look at every case on its business case. And so the principle I, I support, but then it always comes down to, you know, does the business case stack up? Because, you know, we have used money in the past where we put a lot of money in, it sounds great, but it actually doesn't deliver the benefit. So right. in principle, it sounds like a good idea, but let's see the, the concrete business case and I'd love to see that. Okay. Uh, I hope that comes soon too. Allegra Spender, thanks for your time. We'll talk to you soon.